Next, on Wildlife Emergency, a deer viciously attacked by dogs fights for his life. Um, I'd like to get a better look. Is he getting sleepy? A record-breaking number of tiny hurricane survivors. I haven't actually counted squirrels tonight, but I think we've seen close to 100. Go on. And a baby red-tailed hawk unlocks the secret of flight. Yeah. That little dude. There you go. We've got a problem here. Right. We have the opportunity to give these animals a second chance. But he's a little one. He's a very small one. A nice strong heartbeat. He's very handsome. With wildlife, humans are a big part of the problem, and I just want to try to be part of the solution. We need to turn it up a lot more. You not only need to read the mind of your co-workers, you need to read the mind of your patient. We've got five minutes to go before we get three hours. To save a wild animal's life and get it back in the wild, that's what it's all about. Wildlife veterinarian Dr. Ned has been called out into the field an hour from the hospital to examine an injured animal. I saw first thing that morning that it was a pet deer because it wasn't afraid of me. I went right up to it. It had tags in it with numbers in its ear like they use Farmer Riley Smith knew immediately it was a deer someone had illegally made into a pet and then abandoned. Anytime you approach an adult deer and it's either too sick or too hurt to get up and run away from you, it's a bad sign. Or alternatively, uh, too friendly to run away from you. Uh, so it was pretty obvious there's something majorly wrong with this deer early on. It's length, it uh, limps in that leg now. Some dogs brought him in right there in front of my house where, right where you parked the vehicle at six o'clock in the morning. And the deer was trying to fight them off at that point, but by the time I got dressed and got outside, the deer had laid down there beside the fence and the dogs was all around chewing on it. The tame deer, whose ear tags identify it as a pet, was easy prey for the dogs that attacked it dogs had hamstrung him the way uh, a pack of wild wolves bring down their prey. They go for the back legs. This deer is uh, hes pretty calm. He's pretty tame. That doesn't mean he's going to like being put in the back of the truck and driven for an hour. So I'm just going to uh, give him a little sedative to, to keep him calm so he doesn't uh, hurt himself. Just a second. Just a second. Assisted by veterinary technician Sarah, Dr. Ned administers the sedative, which will take effect on the injured animal in moments. Okay. Can you get the truck uh, any closer? Yeah, no problem. This was repair week for the truck. Rehabilitator Robin Easton has donated her horse trailer as the transport vehicle. Oh. Partitions that high. We can make a box stall like we do for the mares. I felt like uh, last evening like it had a chance for recovery if it was properly cared for, but I couldn't do that. As its rescuers know, even if this abandoned pet survives its injuries, long-term care will be necessary. I would hope that he'd be uh, relocated somewhere in a park or something uh, where somebody might enjoy him, that he wouldn't be in danger. Look out for his, his antlers, though. They'll break if we do it the wrong way. Fully sedated, the deer is placed on a makeshift stretcher, which requires four people to carry it. Watch. <laughs> okay, he's going to go behind him first. So right, so, first. ladies before gentlemen, then. While Dr. Ned has handled many cases, the logistics of moving and managing a 120-pound sleeping mammal pose a new challenge. The thing to do is just keep him in the, in the blanket. Yeah. Put his head down there he can. And we'll bring and I'll, these. And I'll feel much better if one of us is back here with him. All right. Sarah will remain with the deer and alert the team if it awakens during the ride. Well, good luck. Remember the signals. I will remember the signals. Keep your fingers crossed. We'll see appreciate what happens. That. I do appreciate it. Thank you. I hope he will come around for you. All right. Oh. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting I'll do my best. As the team begins the journey to the center, it knows that in the race to save this injured deer, the odds are long and time is short. Five hours east of the deer rescue, 
Hurricane Bonnie has struck the resort community of Virginia Beach with winds that reached 104 miles per hour. As soon as the storm rolled in, wildlife rehabilitator Karen Hetherington and her family knew that it was an animal population that was most in peril. It just happened to hit when all the squirrels just had their babies, and even though a squirrel's nest is well made, it will not withstand even, you know, 90 mile an hour winds. It, it just can't. So all I could think of was the squirrels falling out of the trees. The squirrels are falling out of the trees. Hi, Becky. Let me see how many squirrels you have. By coordinating with other neighborhood rescuers, Karen set out to save as many squirrels as possible. Uh, I've got 70 in total. Whoa. Um, I left 22 at home. There's all the squirrels. That's just the beginning. Her goal, to transport as many as she can to the wildlife center for treatment. That's great, because the Wildlife Center in, in Virginia, they said they can take all the ones that are eyes are open, they can handle that very easily. As the growing numbers huddle together for warmth, Karen's husband, Greg, helps calculate how many orphans are yet to arrive. Four, right? Jim Tate, 10. Margaret Stacy, six. Um, Robin Jones is bringing me 48. And then you get another 31, and... Hi, Margaret, oh, hi. And what do we have here? How many? We have six altogether. Six babies, okay. We're ready for the trip. Follow the cages. Hello. Hi. Hi, Jim. <laughs> okay, good. And three, four. How many? Just four? Five? No, we got some more wherever they up here. I need to okay. Keep them all together. And how many do you have at home yet to keep any? Yeah, I've got about five. Um, five yeah. little pinkies. Yeah. All of our rehabbers were inundated with squirrels uh, the next day. That's all we did was take squirrels in the whole entire day. They're on the ground. Uh, sometimes the mother, she gets hurt, so she can't pick up the little squirrels. It's raining. They're cold. Uh, if they're left on the ground, they're just going to die. Yeah. Okay, eyes open. These all have their eyes closed. Okay, just the babies them. are separated by size and weight, with the majority earmarked for transport to the wildlife center. Uh, 37. And as more local rehabbers arrive, the number of squirrels continues to mount. Uh, 37. How many did you take in all together? Over 80. Over 80. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Tried, tried to deal with it best we could. We didn't get power until Sunday night. So this from Friday ripped. to Sunday, we were, we, were, we, were, we were dealing with them basically in the dark. Rehabbing this many babies requires an extraordinary commitment. We've got over 150 squirrels that are hungry. Well, they were fat already, but it's time to feed again. Right now they're eating every two and a half hours, and most of them are doing real well. Some of them were dehydrated when they came in, but um, they're looking a lot better than they did. Now the center must be alerted that the number of patients has greatly exceeded Hi. projections. Um, who is this? Is this Lori? Katie, um, this is Karen Hetherington, and I'm the one that arranged to um, bring the squirrels up today. Okay, um, I have got a lot of squirrels. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Dream, in your wildest imagination, just imagine that many, okay? And this probably exceeds that, all right? Um, is everybody going to be able to handle this? You are? Yes, it is. Wonderful, because, they, because that's what they're marshalling they all the troops. First. And that's exactly what I want to hear, because we have squirrel emergency. <laughs> this is Squirrel Central, OK? Babies, babies, babies. Finally, the last shipment arrives. Oh, well, here's a big one. After subtracting the number of squirrels that will be distributed to local rehabbers, Greg tallies up the amount that will be taken to the Wildlife Center. Plus 58, plus 30, 133. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Suzanne and Jim. Okay, hopefully we got everybody. The orphans must now be packed up for the four-hour journey, where their survival depends on rapid treatment and long-term care. So come up under my hand. Tell me when you've got him. Okay. In the examination room at the Wildlife Center of Virginia, a baby raptor, which was separated from its parents, is treated and cared for. Stretch his legs. Uh, this little red-tailed hawk is uh, a little young and managed to somehow come out of his nest before his time. He's not old enough or strong enough to actually fly well yet. Frequently, these little guys that we call branchers lose their balance or get booted out by an older, more competitive sibling. 
Veterinary intern Dr. Julie examines the two-week-old baby, carefully palpating its bones, which appear not to have been broken, while treating its sharp talons with respect. You're a quiet bird. Hey. The baby bird fell from the top of this towering Virginia pine and was rescued by rehabilitator Dr. Vicki Vaughn. When I saw the bird and realized it was a baby, a young baby, I mean, it was just, it's covered in fuzz. So I knew it was young. Um, instincts are to put it back in the nest. Training is to put it back in the nest, get it back to the mama. That tree is entirely too tall, probably 70, 75 feet tall. There was no way, so I had enough sense just to back off. It was helpless, just fuzzy and cute and sitting there. And, and all my maternal instincts, you know, you just want to grab it and hold it, but it has feet that are this big and a, you know, a beak that's this long. And so I just did my usual. I threw my blanket over it, and wrapped him up, and put him in my car. Monitored by veterinary technician Sarah, the hawk is placed in a small outdoor pen where Sarah hopes it will begin to discover its instincts for flight. Are you getting along with your parents? We were expecting him to sort of run like a chicken on the ground, maybe with his wings out oh, when we first put on. him in here. The reason that we did put him in here is because he is starting to spread his wings when he runs. God, you better be a better parent than that. That's one of the prerequisites for flying is, is exercising those wing muscles. One of the things that I like to do with these young birds, once I'm pretty sure that their balance is okay, is give them a little toss. There you go. And that exercises their wings. That gets them to spread out and glide to the ground. And I wanted to see how he landed. Come on, flap. Come on. Whoosh. There you go. Shall we leave you up there? You like being high, huh? Yeah, you need a little more time to learn to fly. You're just a little bit young yet. Yes, you are. I think he's doing really well, and we'll keep an eye on him and see how his flight progresses. He should actually be flying strongly within about a week. Inside the center, the deer attacked by dogs is in critical condition. Before we can begin to work on the patient, anesthesia concentrations must be calibrated for an animal many times larger than those normally treated here. Oh, he's not asleep yet. As the deer's vital signs continue to weaken, Dr. Ned surveys the damage. There's only so much of a medical evaluation I could do out there in that pasture. So uh, when we got him here to the hospital, I could more completely explore the wounds on his back legs and uh, get a, a more accurate assessment of how extensive the wounds were. Um, I'd like to get a better look if he stopped moving around some, but I don't, yeah. Oh. Is he getting sleepy? The 120 pound deer continues to fight the effect of the anesthesia. But as soon as the deer settles down, the wounds can be flushed and they are very deep. Suddenly, the patient goes into respiratory distress. As matters get worse and worse, we have to consider if it's in the animal's best interest to keep on trying. Um, yeah, I don't think so. But as soon as we have decided to suspend treatment, the deer gives up. The battle is over. I don't think he's alive. The, the muscle damage was extensive and was never going to be repairable. We gave this deer every chance we had, despite his poor prognosis from the outset. It's a sad day for all of us at the Wildlife Center. The feeling of not being able to, to help a patient is, is a very frustrating one, but that doesn't stop us from, from doing all we can. As the veterinary team knows, if this animal had not been made into a pet, it surely could have escaped its predators. But instead, it must be carried out for what will be its final release into the wild. All right, little bird, show me what you can do. Outdoors, the red-tailed hawk, now six weeks old, has been moved to a larger cage with higher perches and in short order has become something very different than the baby bird who fell to earth. Yeah. 
birds are not taught to fly by their parents. Birds have an innate wish to fly, just like human children have an innate wish to walk. They just can't do it the first time they try it. He knows that he needs to fly. It's instinctual. So all he needs is some practice. Turn around and fly. I like that. I like that in a little hawk. The bird has done so well that Sarah graduates it immediately to the center's largest flight cage. Can you slide it in? See, down there? Where it rises to the challenge of its longest airborne journey. Very nice. Come back that way. Come on. Come back that way. No. Come on, little dummy. Come on. For his first flight in the big pen, he did really, really well. He's starting to gain altitude very, very nicely. Um, he still needs a little bit of work, but he's definitely got some good potential. That's not the way to do it. His landings look real good. I think he's figured out what perches are. Um, he may have a little trouble once he gets out into the wild and the perches give more than they do here. We'll get the preceptors to exercise him every day and get his stamina up a little bit more and he'll be ready to go. In the examination room, the staff hurries to get ready as a hundred squirrel patients, survivors of Hurricane Bonnie, are soon expected to arrive from Virginia Beach. The paperwork gets done. The animals get given uh, an ID number. They get brought here to me and Dr. Seguin. Now the carload of patients arrives. You get the right number with the right number. Uh, you know, right, right, right. Well, welcome. Hello. Looks like you have brought us quite a load. Hi. Hi. If you have a pen in your hand, it will help. Okay. 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 Is that all we got? Thank you so much. Okay. Well, I think we're ready. Got it. Take this first load in and bring some more folks back in. I have never seen so many squirrels in one place. Three squirrels get records. Our team hurriedly sorts through the many patients so that the ones most in need are identified and treated first. He is yep. no longer with us. Great waiters make better numbers. The overall condition of this first group is surprisingly good. 60 grams. This is a boy. Isn't that all right? They're all uh, they're all very active. They're all really dehydrated, but they're all very active and seem pretty healthy so far. They need uh, fluids. Their hydration is the most important thing that we're addressing right now. The assembly line sweeps by the veterinary team, which treats its patients at a record pace. Bigger than a 20? Blue? I'll take blue. Put them together by age? Pretty much. Wait, what was that? What sex is that one? They're all marked pretty much the same. We're just keeping them in separate groups and keeping the cards and everybody together. So a group of squirrels may have Nick. a pink head, a yellow head, and a green head, but with the cage cards and separate caging, we keep them separate that way. 73, female. This one's cold, too. This one needs to get warmed up. Okay. Preventing hypothermia is a critical part of the treatment. Okay. Thanks, boss. Okay. This one's very cool. This one's cool. So the squirrels are transferred to the ICU, where volunteers provide warm hands. Uh, one eye open okay. and one eye still closed. Ain't nothing wrong except the same thing as the other ones. So dehydration um, and a bit skinny. Most of them are very, very skinny. An exhausted Karen turns over the last of her young charges. Three CCs of bait. As patient after patient is examined and treated, the team loses track of the caseload. Counted squirrels tonight, but I think we've seen close to a hundred. We've been or a sort of thousand. rushing them through. It, it's, it should be anywhere from fifty to a thousand. I'm ready for that. After their emergency treatment, the orphans need homes for their long-term care. A long way from home, bud. This is uh, 29 squirrels, and they're going to one of our rehabbers. I kind of picked through when I was helping Sarah at first. I picked through, and I, I chose the guys that looked like they wanted to come live with me. You almost done. And finally, as the last remaining squirrels are examined and the local news crews get their final shots, things begin to slow down. So they 
They do look in good shape. There, uh, everybody was dehydrated, but there were no, uh, there wasn't a, a broken leg or, uh, or an arm in the whole bunch for being blown out of their tree yeah, by a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> lucky bunch of squirrels. Resting in the ICU, the squirrels are safe and warm. Though they will be released soon, it will be a long time before any of us forget the day they were brought in out of the rain. Got it. This is not a fishing expedition for veterinary intern Dr. Tracy, but a means of giving the red-tailed hawk a dress rehearsal in outdoor flight before actually releasing him. He's pretty cool. Is he a younger guy? Or? Yeah, he was just this year's birth. What we're doing here is called a creance technique, which is a falconry technique from way, way back beyond the Middle Ages of flying a bird on a line to practice flying for strengthening. It was used for hunting hawks originally to teach them that they could only go a certain distance. OK, this looks good. We brought him out on the Creon's line just to make sure, since he is a young, immature bird, that he flies well in the wild because he just doesn't have the experience that a mature red tail would. So just Throw give him up, give him, yeah, Throw him up. a good yeah. hole. For flight number one, the bird is cast up and immediately takes flight until the one tree in the vicinity somehow snags him. I was trying to stop the bird before he got to the bush, and I was a little slow on the uptake. So he was trying to maneuver his way around through the bushes to clear ground, I think. And I sort of stopped him in the middle, which was where he got stuck in the honeysuckle. But <laughs> all in all, I think that was a good flight. He did not get tangled in the tree until I began to slow him down. Human error happens. Bird didn't get hurt, thankfully. <laughs> then, flight number two okay. is a short one. Put the gloves on, grab them. When it comes to creancing, Bird. the third time's the charm. The third flight was gorgeous. Beautiful. We wanted to see him fly nice and flat in the wind, and he did everything we wanted to see him do. Okay, Bird, you've done good. Next, we're going to get in touch with Dr. Vicki, who had brought the bird to us, and see where she would like to release it. And she had said that perhaps up on the Blue Ridge Parkway would be a good spot to release the bird. All righty. All right, Vicki, grab your bird. Okay. Central to one of the natural migration routes for the red-tailed hawk, this location is an ideal spot for the bird's release. All right, this is good. Is this good? This is good. Let me get my gloves on. Can I say goodbye? You, oh. can, uh, you can say goodbye to him if, when I get him out of the box. You can say goodbye. All right, you want to sit him down? For Dr. Vicki, who has traveled hours to be here, there is no greater reward for the rescue than to be present at the release. I'm going to get back. Is there anything else I can do? No, ma'am. All righty, I'm going to get out of the way. All right, I got the box. You get the baby. So I'm not a baby anymore. Oh, let me look at him before he there goes. Is. Look at the, where'd all the baby feathers go? But you see how green his ear is? Yes. That's how you can tell he's this year's bird. Oh. He's still green. He's gorgeous. OK, here he goes. Say goodbye. Bye. Oh, look at him. Oh, God, look. He just, he's just got himself up behind some leaves. There he is. There he goes. He's oh. just trying to get high. He's trying to, he'll get to the highest point of that branch, probably, before he leaves. All right, now, what's all the flopping around and? He's just stretching. He's not used to, to uh, he has pretty much perched on one perch size. And he's not used to perching on these little it's branches. Branch. He's not used to having a branch, a big branch give when he lands on it. So he's, uh, he's, gotta, he's gotta learn how to be a wild bird now. He's up there and he's gorgeous. He's gonna break some hearts. And the bird who once fell from a tree now begins his new life in the wild.